Hello everyone, I'm Sarge, this is Bad Company Sarge, my channel, and today we're going to be going over a quick overview of what's been added in today's update, Ever Upwards. So Fallout 76 just got an update, I believe it was 3.5GB for PC and 8GB for consoles. If you haven't downloaded it already, then go do that because there is so much stuff in this. It's ridiculous, like I'm not going to be covering everything here. I can't. There is so much stuff. I haven't been able to do it all yet because a lot of it's time consuming, but they just decided to go, oh, we'll give you tiny tidbits every week or so and then give you tons of stuff this day. So we've got a ridiculous amount of stuff to go over. First up, and first thing I did, was legendary scrapping. There are now machines at train stations where you can scrap legendary weapons and armor in order to get scrip. That's S-C-R-I-P, which is a new currency. There's a maximum of 150 scrip you can get from scrapping these legendaries, and I assume it's going to be like vendors, and their amounts will reset at the same times. And I checked as well, and this is a shared 150 scrip you can make from all of the different vending machines. It's not dependent on the machine at each train at each train station. It's a universal one. So once you've sold that 150 scrip worth of stuff. You can't get anything until the vendor's restocked, and you can then scrap some more stuff. Which is kind of annoying for me, because if you see my inventory in any of these video clips, then you'll see I was carrying around a ton of legendaries to scrap down. The value for what you get, how much scrip you get, is based on if it's a weapon or an armour. Weapons seem to be more valuable, and on how many stars it get. How many stars the item has got, sorry. This does mean that if you've got, say, a one-star nocturnal boxing glove, that will give you as much scrip as a one-star instigating gorse rifle. Now obviously one of those is much more valuable than the other, so maybe if you want to get rid of both of them, you scrap down the boxing glove and you sell the gorse rifle in player vending, which we'll be getting onto shortly. Now this scrip that you'll be getting will be used as currency for the purveyor, the legendary vendor who arrives Thursday the 16th. So you've got just over a week to scrap down some legendaries, get yourself a bit of currency, all prepared for when the legendary vendor shows up. I know I'll be scrapping down a lot of stuff, and hopefully the vendor will have some amazing things that I really want. Enough of that though, we'll keep this quick, on to player vending. You can now build vending machines at your own camp. You already know this, as soon as the update's gone live, you don't have to learn anything, it's just there. You know it, all good. You only know one of the colours of the machines, the others look like they'll be unlocked likely through plans, or rewards for something I'm not entirely sure how, or possibly through the Atom Shop, there's already some stuff on there. So you can build these at your camp, they've got their own section, vendors, which is quite nice. You put items into them and set price. Now the items are gained from your stash, so you're not getting any extra storage space here, it's stuff in your stash which you can sell, but you set the price of them, all good. There's a maximum of 30 items you can assign per machine, and a maximum of 4 machines. Now, this originally sounds kind of bad, but there is some good stuff to it. Because these 30 items doesn't mean, for example, if you have 30 Nuka-Cola Quantums, that each individual Nuka-Cola Quantum counts as a sellable item. Instead, it shows the entire group. So I've got a lot of stuff in bulk. For example, Nuka-Cola Quantum. So if I put all 10 of the Nuka-Cola Quantums, or... I can't even remember what it was I had, like Ballistic Bock. I think I had like 15 of those or something. I had all 15 of those as a stack. People can come in, buy one for the set price they've got it as, and that's all good. That just uses up one slot. Additionally, each of these 30 items only counts for the individual machine. So it's a total of 120 items that you can have sold, and each of them can be in multiples. A little confusing, once you've started playing around with it yourself, it should make sense. Hopefully the video also helps with explaining this. Now for each sale that you make, you only make 90% of the value of what you're selling it at. So I sold a lot of stuff at 50 caps, which someone was very, very happily buying, a few different plans, and I only made 45 caps off of each sale. 10% of it is just blown away into the ether. They've said they've done this to help with the in-game economy and deal with inflation and stuff, it's likely going to be a nightmare system, I've already seen com people complaining about this, but it's not too much of a problem for me. Now, once you've built a machine, it will mark your camp on the map, and anyone else who has built a player vending machine has their camp marked on the map as well. You can then fast travel to other people's camps 
if they've got these built, and go see their camps and go buy stuff from their machines. It's really quite cool. And when you hover over the icons on the map, you'll see a little overview of what there is to buy, not the specifics, but for example ammo or plans or miscellaneous or weapons, and get a rough indicator of how many things it's selling. So when I hovered over my one, I saw, oh, that's a whole bunch of plans and a whole bunch of aid items. Sweet. Gives you a rough idea of what will be there before you go. So if you're searching for weapons, there's no point travelling over to someone's camp if they've got nothing in the weapon slot. Enough of player vending though, let's go on to Pioneer Scouts for quest-based stuff of this, because we haven't even got onto quests anymore. It's, oh, there's so much stuff. So first up, there's a free poster in the Atom Shop. It wasn't under-featured when I checked, which was a bit odd. However, if you go under the camp section of that, you will find it straight away there. Free poster. Read the poster, it will then tell you to go to Camp Lewis. You can also find the posters at train stations, or just go to Camp Lewis. E either one works, it's perfectly fine. Once you've headed there, you'll be tasked with talking to a robot, who will add a whole bunch of missions to your quest log. There'll be a big old side mission, as well as a couple of miscellaneous, which will lead you to even more robots, part of the Pioneer Scouts, which will then start off repeatable quests. I'm guessing that these robots will be kind of like Biv, daily quests that you can just go over to, get new plans, etc, etc. Now this whole Pioneer Scouts thing looks pretty dense. There's a lot of stuff there. Uh, first thing I noticed when I teleported to Camp Lewis was vending machines, where you spend tokens to get fancy outfits and plans and other things, including backpack upgrades, something else we're going to be getting on to very soon. There's a lot of stuff here, try to keep up. There, there is a ridiculous amount of stuff, and if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments, because there is so much stuff here, I'm going to be playing more of this after I've done editing this video, so I'll have more answers after that, someone else might be able to help you. So there's new outfits, skins, plans, etc, and it looks like some of it is going to be based on your rank within the Pioneer Scouts. When you first get there, you're obviously unranked, when you talk to the robot, you get put up to Tadpole, and it looks like the top rank might be Possum. So you've got various ranks to get through in order to unlock better gear. To get through the ranks, you need to complete quests. Some of the quests, including the very first one you get, will require you to complete challenges. If you check in the world section of the challenges menu, you'll see there's a whole bunch of new ones added, which are to do with the Pioneer Scouts. They've got their own little thing on them. Instead of rewarding atoms, they reward a badge. Look at these objectives, and it will tell you what you need to do. They're quite intense at points. A lot of the challenges themselves aren't too difficult. It's like, oh, craft two stim packs. Very easy to do. But it'll be like eight or ten challenges for some of these things just to unlock the one particular badge. So could be quite time consuming. And that's also why you're not seeing footage of me at the end of all of this. Because I've been playing for about an hour now. And it would just would have taken too long to get this video out. Now to get your first backpack, apparently you need to get promoted to the rank of Possum. This will take a while to get, but I'm going to be making a video on backpacks once I've done all of this, so if you want to hold off and just see if it's worth it, what the different benefits are, if there's any quick ways to do it, do that. If you're super hyped about getting them, just go through the quests, complete the challenges as best as you can, you'll get there in the end, you get a sweet looking backpack. It's going to be cool. The different backpacks also have different bonuses, and there's plans you can learn in order to improve your backpack, there's both practical stuff and aesthetic stuff, so you could perhaps boost carry weight and also make it look skulls and things or whatever. It does appear there's going to be Atom Shop skins as well for anyone who really likes that stuff, but I'm hoping there'll be plenty of good skins just in the base game itself. Now, that is enough about the major content updates. It's all good there. Let's talk very quickly about all the small stuff that's been done. So there's been bug fixes, minor changes, balancing and more. There's been rad storms increased, plasma gun da plasma plasma I can't say that plasma gun damage has been upped, and there's a new survival scoreboard. There is a ridiculous amount of small changes, stuff that's changed with camps, stuff that's changed with items, with crafting. There's a whole bunch of very small stuff which isn't immediately no noticeable. It's way too much for me to go over in this video without wasting all of your time, so I'm just going to leave in the pinned comment and in the description, the link to the Inside the Vault article, which, or the patch notes, sorry, which we'll go over it all. There's a ton of stuff there. It, it's kind of crazy. One cool thing which I haven't actually seen yet or tested out is apparently there's a terminal which tells you about new stuff. 
I need to take a look at that. There is way too much to do. Now, the very final tip that I'm going to give you is something I stumbled across by mistake. The new survival mode weapon, you know those weekly weapons I make the videos about? It can currently be earned in adventure mode, very easily as well. I only stumbled across this because I'd completed two of the three challenges by accident. The challenges are kill a human-like enemy, claim a workshop, build a turret or trap at a workshop. Just go over to a workshop with human-like enemies, claim it, build like the punji board, you've got yourself a resolute veteran, a three-star Gatling gun. Even if you don't want it to keep perhaps, you could still trade it in for some legendary script, or put it in player vending, I'm sure someone will buy it. There's plenty to do with it. This might be patched soon, or they might just leave it for this week. Either way, see if you can earn it now, and might as well. You don't even have to go into survival mode this time. It, it's weird. I was surprised I got it. Nice surprise, though. One extra final thing which I actually forgot to mention during the initial recording of this video is that vending machines, no, the vendor robots, now have a huge number of plans, like way more than ever before, and apparently it's much more stable with what they're going to have. So you'll see in my little footage here, there are so many plans you can get from them. If you're short on plans now, go to the vendors, they'll have what you're looking for. Head over to White Springs, you've got all of the vendor bots there, see what they've got. It's a good way to use all the money you're going to make from player vending. Anyway, back to what I was saying, which I believe is the outro now. Anyway, that is more than enough talking from me. I will let you all get back to the update. I'm going to be covering the update as well. I'll also be making videos over the next couple of days, talking about the Resolute Veteran, that weapon which I've just told you about, and a very easy way to get it. Talking about backpacks for Pioneer Scouts, and anything else you want me to cover. If you do want me to cover a very specific topic, just leave it in the comments below, and I will get on with that. But for now, that is all from me. Thank you very much for watching. Sarge out.